everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Rick Wallace. Uh, stopping in on you real briefly. I just want to talk to you real briefly this morning about what you do uh, when the sun comes up. Uh, before I get to that, I just want to remind everybody that we're still doing the free business breakthrough sessions and the free rapid change sessions um, uh, at the Visionetics Institute. Um, we give away uh, one free rapid change and one uh, free business breakthrough session. Um, the questionnaire for the rapid change session is in the uh, information area of the post on this. Uh, so you can read through it, complete the questionnaire, send it back to the email address listed, and uh, we'll be in contact with you to schedule your uh, free breakthrough session. If you want to focus more on business, uh, just email us at that same address and ask for the questionnaire for that, and we'll get it to you. Or you can visit the site at uh, www.rickwallacephd.link. And hover over the tab that says um, life change courses and programs and find the business breakthrough session or the rapid change session. Again, fill out that information, uh, drop it uh, in our inbox uh, at life change at rickwallacephd.link and we will get back to you to schedule that. Just want to talk about that uh, real quick. Uh, I'll mention it again when I get ready to get off. What happens when the sun comes up? You often hear me talk about the importance of priming. What happens when I actually get up in the morning and start my day? How does my day look? Uh, what I can tell you is it is immensely important, first of all, to understand the importance of how you start your day. How you start your day is going to set the course of the day. It's going to set the direction. It's going to set the mood. It's going to set your expectations. It's, it's going to, have you ever got up and something went wrong and then you just had a bad day at the office or you you know you couldn't really get focused on your work i mean you got some bad news or you got up and one of the kids was acting a pure donkey or whatever it is and it kind of set your whole mood for the day and you you had one thing start to happen after another what well, the truth of the matter is things are always coming at at you during the day uh the difference is the state of mind you're in when they hit you if you are in a primed state of mind that is ultimate that is prepared that has high expectations that is full of confidence of what will come that understands that no matter what you're going through you have the capacity to overcome it see when you're in that state of mind the things you engage you engage from a perspective of i'm built for i'm built for this i can handle this i'm going through this but i'm built for it my design demands that i overcome this obstacle and then you take it um as a person who takes anything I do seriously, I'm going to always observe uh, the legends, you know, in, in, in the game. Uh, you know, no matter who it is, I'm going to observe the legends in the game. And then I'm going to observe the top performers in the game now. I'm going to learn what they're doing, how they're doing it. I'm not trying to emulate them. I'm trying to find out what works for them. Why? Because I want to find out how my talents line up with that technique. And if it lines up well, I'm going to take it and I'm going to adapt it to who I am to enhance what I'm capable of, do, capable of doing with my class. And one of the people that I absolutely love that's on the circuit now, full of energy, totally different than most people, and I absolutely, absolutely love him is Eric Thomas. And so I study Eric Thomas. I study Les Brown. I study Bob Proctor. I study Zig Ziglar. Uh, when he was alive, I studied uh, Jim Rohn when he was alive, I, all the way back to Earl Nightingale and all up through all these other guys. I study them. I want to know what they're doing. And a lot of people you wouldn't have heard about that uh, spend more time uh, on the writing level. But uh, I mean, Deepak Chopra, all these people, I study them. I find out what's about. It takes me on a journey. It gives me information. All the information they went through, I got to go through it now. I got to find out. I heard what you said you got out of it, but let me go dig in it and find out how I can use it. And that's what happened with Eric. Eric talks about the story of the lion and the gazelle. And, and it ties into what we're talking about this morning, the lion and the gazelle. He, you know, he says every day in Africa, the lion and the gazelle get up. He says every day in Africa, the gazelle, no matter what, wakes up with one thing on its mind. I've got to be faster 
than the fastest lion in order to stay alive. So the gazelle wakes up running. The lion wakes up with one thing on its mind. I have to be faster than the slowest gazelle in order to stay alive. And they wake up and they're driven. And, and both of them, and, and I'm the type of person that when I'm looking at something, I'm not just looking at the circus. Uh, Eric's point was, no matter what in Africa, no matter whether you're the lion or the gazelle, when you wake up, you better be running. And that's so true. No matter where you're at, what position you're in, at the current moment, your survival depends upon your grind, depends upon your focus, depends upon your commitment to wake up and go get what's out there or to wake up and protect what you have. And when you wake up in the morning, you better be running. You better be on your game. You better be focused because there's something close enough to you to negatively impact you. That's life. You're never going to get to a point where everything is easy, nothing's going wrong. You don't have to look over your shoulder. You don't have to worry. Now, you shouldn't be worried anyway, but you should be focused and you should always be aware of what's happening. Why? Because while you're prepared, anything can sneak up and get you. I've seen lions in, in, in you know, like I said, I, 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 absolutely, I absolutely love big cats. So I watch a lot of Discovery Channel and other stuff like that with big cats. And I've seen them get killed uh get being caught off guard by big bulls uh and other animals uh kicked by a giraffe or whatever and get caught the wrong way and it end up killing them because and, and they're the, they're the predator they're the king so you have to always be on your game you have to always be focused but when I start to really break this down I start to watch literally watch gazelles and watch lions and, and, and how they interact and when the, when, when, when the only time the gazelle isn't actually running is when nothing's chasing it. I mean, the moment that it senses fear, they all, boom, they're gone. And the chase is on. You know, whether it's a cheetah, whether it's a lion, whatever, when, it, when, 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 when they sense danger, they immediately get ready to bounce and they're they gone. But when they don't sense danger, when there's nothing urgent, when there's nothing pushing them, when it's nothing driving them, they're not running. And see, that's a lot of us today. We're sitting around and we don't have, we, we found that comfort zone. See, ain't nothing chasing us and no reason for us to chase anything. It's not in our nature. So the where we've gotten in life is because we were always worried, what was, worried about what was behind us. It was chasing us. It was pushing us. And the moment we got far enough away from, the moment we got far enough away from poverty, far enough away from uh, the, 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 the identity of a family that we didn't want to identify with, that identify with, far enough away from being bullied as the fat kid. So you got in the gym, you got bucked up, but as soon as you got away, far enough away from that identity, you quit doing what you were doing. See, you weren't driven. You had a goal, but it had not become who you were. See, you weren't naturally a grinder. You weren't naturally a runner. You weren't naturally a gym rat. You just didn't want to be fat anymore. This is the difference. It's a big difference in being who you are and not wanting to be something else. See, not wanting to be something else will get you so far, but when you know what it is you want and you single in on that and you fix your mind, ain't nothing can shake you because nothing's going to stop you until you get there. You wake up every morning grinding. You wake up, every, you go to sleep with it on your mind. You wake up with it on your mind. You're pushing, you're grinding, you're fighting. And I said, mm. I say, so what's the difference if both the lion and the gazelle have to be running when the sun comes up in Africa? That's the, that's the theme of the story, that, that they both have to be running. Whether you're the lion or the gazelle, you've got to be up and running. But what's the difference? That's it. When nothing's chasing the gazelle, the gazelle is good. When ain't no pressure, when ain't nothing pushing, when ain't nothing to be afraid of, the gazelle ain't running. The lion is always hunting. The lion is always looking. The lion don't need any urgency to tell it to go get it. If you anywhere near the lion, you gonna get it. And that's the difference. You got to have a mentality that when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to get it. Now, I've seen stories where lions are out there and they have a drought where, I mean, it's hard to get food and they go a couple days and they get hungry. But see, that's just it. You might not get what you want the first hunt out. 
You might not get what you want the second hunt out. You might not get what you want the third uh, the third hunt out. It might take the fourth hunt and you're a little drained, you're a little tired, you're a little overwhelmed, you're a little bit concerned because now you know I'm getting real close to the point. If I don't make this, if I don't make this kill, I'm not gonna eat it. It might be the last day. It, it, but, but 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 that first day, that second day, that third day, you're out there and it, it, it don't come through. If you ever been hunting or been on a fishing trip and you you can have a couple of bad days, but then all of a sudden there it is, it's sitting right in your scope or it, 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 it you you get that big hit. And, and, and you reel it in and it takes a while, but you, the, the whole three days that you didn't get nothing was worth it because you got what you came for, but you had to say, what if you'd have quit the first day? What if the line just stood up and said, well, we didn't, we didn't catch nothing today. Let's just wrap it up. We're not what we not, we not lions. We're not predators. We're not, we not carnivores. We, we tried. It didn't work. No, the lion sits up and says, I'm a beast. This is what I do. Their food, I, I will get it. I'm going to figure it out. And that is how you go out. You wake up every morning running. You wake up every morning fixed and focused. You wake up every morning not shaken or daunted by what's facing you because you're built for this. I've seen lions take down hippos. I've seen lions take down giraffes. The only thing I have not seen a lion take down is an elephant. I've seen them go in and snatch up crocodiles. I mean, I've seen, and why are they doing Because they are beasts. And they know within themselves who they are. And they attack life based on their identity and what they expect based on who they are. Now, they are primitive in nature. Here you are with the ability that if you don't have that type of mindset, you can literally create it. You can literally build it. There used to be a belief that by the time you were five, that your personality was pretty much set. If you were docile and passive, you were going to be docile and passive all of your life. If you were aggressive and angry, you were going to be aggressive and angry and a troublemaker all of your life. If you were uh, not fixed and focused or uh, academically inclined, you were going to be not fixed and focused and academically inclined all of your life. Well, the truth of the matter is we know now that we are constantly every day creating new neuroreceptors in our brain that is capable of taking on and shaping our personality, our drive, our, who, our behavior, who we are, how we interact with people. We can literally go and take the time, mold, shape, remap, uh, restructure our neurological uh, mapping become what it is we want if we if we if what we desire to thrive in requires a highly extroverted and aggressive personality and we've been introverted all of our lives then we have to start with a slow process of tearing down while building up you build up the part of you that's able to engage people by becoming comfortable with it, first and foremost. It's not what you naturally would do, but you're developing a confidence. How do you develop a confidence? You do it over and over again. You see it in your mind as well. One of the things that I use consistently when working with my clients is the image. I make them practice it in their mind. I make them see it over and over in their mind, over and over in their mind, over and over in their mind. More than I do say, okay, if, if you're struggling with, 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 with crowds, we're not going to put you in the crowd. We're going to let you envision yourself. We're going to watch I'm, I'm, We're gonna watch the anxiety. We're going to look at all that stuff, but we're going to deal with it. And we're going to create an image where you rise and you strive in the crowd, where you create the outcome in the crowd, where you have control over what happens in the crowd. You are creating it. And why is that so powerful? Because the human brain and the human mind, the subconscious and the mind and the non-conscious brain cannot tell the difference between what's being imagined and what's being, uh, what's real. So when you have it in your mind and you consistently live it over in your mind, you're actually practicing it. We, uh, this was actually proven with a group of basketball players who were struggling uh, with their free throw shot. I think I shared this with you before, but they took uh, one half of the group. And they put them in the gym and they practice for hours a day on their shot with, with, with a shot expert, uh, working on their form, their technique, their release, the whole, the, I mean, from the time you catch the ball 
the entire process and the motion of how you go through your free throws. They worked on that over and over again. The other group wasn't even allowed to pick up a basketball over the same period of time. And they were only allowed to envision themselves in their mind, but they were told to envision themselves making a shot every time, shooting it perfect every time, the exact same way every time, making every free throw. And they did it over and over and over again. The group that did not practice physically outperformed the group that did. Um, I mean, significant. it was statistically st significant. The difference uh, in, in, in what was able to produce, the mind is powerful. The mind will provide you with everything you need to go out and get it. When you challenge your mind to deliver, it delivers. It delivers better than anything you've ever come across. There is no computer that can outperform the brain. When you tell it to deliver, it delivers. The problem is the artists you've been placing, the keyword strings you've been entering into its search engine are the things that have been holding you back. You've been telling it that you can't. So it's finding every reason why you can't. You've been telling it that you're not that good at and it's been finding all of the things to validate it you've been sitting up putting the wrong keywords in the search engine of your brain and your brain has been providing you with the information you requested it's an unbelievable and un i mean unimaginably powerful tool at doing that nothing can compete with it at doing that it's very good at what it does it goes and finds what you find the most give the most attention to the thing you say is important when you consistently talk about what you're not that's called self-talk, good or bad. What you when you're talking about yourself, that's self-talk. Whether you're saying it to yourself, whether you're saying it to you know how many times I sit up and I watch people tell somebody else, I'm just not that good at that. Man, I wish I could do that, but man, I wish I was like you. But man, I don't know if I'll ever get this marriage to work. And and and, and I've, I've seen it. I mean, I've observed it. I've had people do it with me. Tell me, I'm like, no, no, no. We're not going to say that. Because every time you say that, you tell your brain that's your reality. And your brain just simply goes into motion to create the environment that supports the reality. You've got to change what you're telling your brain. You've got to change how you see the world. you got to change it. When you wake up in the morning, when the sun comes up, you, you wake up in the morning with an expectation that I'm going to achieve what I set my mind on. And I, am the, I will be the first one to tell you this. Look. Delay, it's, 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 this is one of the most important lessons that I teach. And if you don't get anything else, get this, because this is one of the things that defeat so many people. Listen to me closely. Delay does not mean denial. Just because it doesn't happen on the time frame or within the time frame that you set, just because your 90-day goal hasn't hit in 90 days, just because you say, I got to get it done by, and it's not done by, delay is not denial. A lot of time, denial is the test that God, the Almighty, the universe, however you want to call it, because I'm not here to tell you that, but, 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 but uh, God, the Almighty, designed the universe to test your resilience and your commitment. See, a lot of things will be withheld until you're truly committed to having them. See, wanting them and being committed to having them are two different things. So you don't get what you want, you get who you are. And so if it's something you want, you know, uh, say that, that, there's a client I had a long time ago when I uh, had state fit fitness and training and I was actually functioning as a personal fitness instructor, hands on. Um, the guy uh, was actually, you know, uh, the, the executive uh, director at Morgan Stanley. And I had started training his wife. And then she said, my husband wants to run a marathon. I'm going, okay, you know, I deal with explosive, you know, type stuff when it comes to sports specifics. So I went and got with a guy uh, uh, named Kim that's an unbelievable distance runner. And he told me and, you know, basically got with me over a couple of weeks and we went over, you know, how to train somebody to run a marathon. And so when I got with him, he wanted to run a marathon. But what he was, was he was a couch potato. He was a guy that was overweight, that went to work, uh, made a good living, came home, sit around, watched TV, played with the kids. And we're talking about running a marathon. Uh, let me tell you, if you ever tried to run one, it, it's like that. It's really, it's really, really like that. You got to have your mind right and your body right to complete a marathon. Walking one ain't no fun if you ain't got yourself together. But he wanted to run a marathon. So we got together. First of all, we got his head right. We got his mind right. 
Then we got up every morning. I met him at the track before he went to work. 4.30 in the morning, we had the track. We training. We doing all these different things. But what I explained to him at the beginning is, you can do it, but you're not that person now. If you want to run a marathon, you've got to become the person who's capable. And that, whether, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whether it's uh, academic, whether it's experiential, experiential, no matter what it is, whatever it is that you want to get done, you've got to become the person capable. Here's the great news, though. I don't care what it is. I don't care how unbelievable it sounds to everybody else. The capacity to become it is within you. There's nothing that you can conceive in your mind that you cannot do. See, that's the, unbel that's the wonderful thing about having a faith. When you have a faith in a creator, a designer of the universe, uh, in whatever level you have it at, that's the, that's the wonderful thing about it. See, if you have a designer, if you have some type of relationship, no matter what your faith system is, and I'm, again, I'm not here to even discuss that, but whatever it is, that means you believe in a supernatural power that holds things in order, that, or that at least at some point set everything in order to where it functions in, 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 in unbelievable specificity in order, and that it responds to you and your energy. And it, that, that's there. So if you believe in that, then you believe that that, that, that supernatural being, that infinite intelligence that created this universe is benevolent. Well, if this, if, 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 if this creator or this designer is benevolent, then you've got to believe that he would not design his ultimate design of all designs and then put the capacity in their mind to conceive something they could not have. That would be mean. That would be cruel. That would be torture to sit up and be able to conceive something in your mind, but never, ever be able to have it. The very idea that you can conceive something in your mind is God's evidence that it's possible. Now, so whenever I get something in my mind, I don't get to questioning if it's possible. I get to sitting up saying, do I want to do it? Is it, is, is it enough value in it for me to make the sacrifices? See, that's the other part of it. Most people don't want to make sacrifices. Most people don't want to put the skin in the game it requires to have it. They want to have the promise without the process. And I, I can tell you this from the life that I've been fortunate enough and blessed enough to live. I can tell you this, that there is no promise without there first being a process. Process proceeds. Promise. You cannot have the promise of your design, the promise of your relationship with the Almighty, whatever you are basing your promises in life on that you are trying to achieve by circumventing the process. Let me save you some time. You cannot have the promise without first enduring the process. Process always, always always precedes the promise. There's some things out there waiting on you, but you got to go through the process. There's some unbelievable things that are sitting right in front of you, but you got to be willing to make the sacrifice. It's some things that you have the capacity inside of you to do, to have, that you've been eyeing for years, but you're going to have to go through the process. You're going to have to get down and hunker down and push through it. But let me explain something to you. You're built for it. You're built for that battle. You're built for that struggle. You're built for the obstacles. You're built for the difficulty. You know why? Because your purpose was wired and set in your DNA. And it protects you as you pros progress towards your destiny. Listen very carefully to what I'm saying right now. But see, it's, it's not my goal to motivate you. If, you. if you're not motivated, that's a whole other problem. Your motive is simply the reason why you're doing something. Now, if your motive isn't big enough or strong enough, that's one of the things that's stopping you. Your why, your motive, your purpose for doing something has to be so great that it's bigger than anything you go against even when you're not. But that's something different. Let me explain something to you. When you begin to examine your design, externally, and internally, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, when you begin to look at your makeup, when you begin to look at some of your natural proclivities, when you begin to look at your physicality, when you begin to look at the way you form sentences, when you begin to look at the way you're able to shake hands or look someone in the eye, all of these different things are unique to you because no one does it exactly like you do. When you start to examine yourself, you start to uncover your identity and your purpose. And when you become, uh, uh, aware of your, your your identity and your purpose, you become introduced to your passion. 
and your passion will drive you towards your destiny. But check this out. When you understand, when you start to look at the intricate nature of who you are in design, I mean, from the intricate and, and highly detailed design of the human eye, unbelievable when you start to break it down and look at it and examine it uh, from, a, from a scientific way. I mean, the complexity of the human eye alone is, is, is baffling. And we don't even have to get into the complexity of the human brain. Uh, a, a, an organism that has the capacity to process 400 billion bits of information per second. That's some, that's some power in the design here. Now, now check this out. When you understand that design, you will become aware of your purpose. You will find that your purpose is attached to a destiny. And the very definition and nature of destiny says you are destined to do it. Meaning that anything that stands in your way, anything that comes against you, anything that tries to stop you only ensures that it happens. That's the definition of death, that you can't stop it no matter how hard you try because it's destined to happen. The only one that can interrupt the pattern of your destiny is you by quitting on it, by turning away from it, by, 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 by chasing things of lesser value. But if you make up in your mind, I, I'm going to do this, that there's something positive and powerful coming out of my destiny. And you sit down and say, I'm going the distance. That's it right there. I'm going the distance. The moment you make up in your mind that you're going after something and you're willing to go the distance, meaning that once you start, you're not stopping. I have a saying, no surrender, no retreat. I'm not turning back. I'm not giving up. I'm not surrendering. I'm not relenting. If I get knocked back, I'm coming back. And that is a mindset you've got to take because you're going to get hit. You're going to get knocked down. Like Les Brown says, if you get knocked down, try the best you can to land on your back. Why? Because if you can look up, if you're on your back, you can look up. And if you can look up, you can get up. I've, I've, I've had to get up more times than I, I, I care to recall. But what happens is the first time I got knocked down, it hurt. I was shaking. And the thing is, in the process of getting back up, I didn't even know at the time how I was going to overcome what knocked me down. I just had it in my mind that I'm not going to stay down. I might stand up and get knocked right back down because I don't even know what I'm going to do when I get up, but I'm not going to stay on the ground. But you'd be surprised that after a few times of just taking on life and taking life's best shots, that when you stand up and get up, you automatically start to form a, 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 an idea of what's next. You start to be prepared to move once you get up. You start to be prepared to respond once you get up but you've got to get up. So my question to you, as we shut this down, is real simple. When the sun comes up, what will you be doing? When the sun comes up every morning, what will you be doing? I'm up long before the sun comes up. Long before the sun comes up, I'm up. I'm into my day. I'm dictating to my day what it will bring to me. Sometimes my day is hard-headed, and I don't get what I demand, but it's coming. I might have to wait a little extra time, but it's coming. Life will deliver to you whatever price you demand of it in every area. If you're not getting something out of life, you haven't committed to it, you haven't stuck with it, you haven't worked with it, you haven't built the value in your life to demand it. You can demand whatever you want from life, but you better have the value in your life to demand it because it costs something. And that's all, all this is about. If you don't have it, it's because you're not truly committed to it and demanding uh, uh, that you have it and you don't have the value in your life to pay the price it costs to have it. But when you sit up and de decide, Okay, if I'm going to be that, when I decided I was going to take on this industry, I decided that uh, what place I was going to find in this industry, and that's where I'm going. Nothing's going to stop me from getting there because I have something to give. But the first thing I had to know is if I'm going to come into this industry and demand 
what I'm demanding from the industry, I better bring something of value to the table. So I'm increasing my value every day. For every bit of information I've shared, I can't tell you how many hours I've embedded in, 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 into learning and, and, and to mastering what it is I do. I didn't just show up. Now, the gifting of being able to speak has always been there. As back as three years old, I had a mic in my hand standing in front of people. I, I was being given what to say, but the way I said it moved people. That's been there but I had to increase the value of the talent alone. That's where we see so many people fail trying to ride, ride talent by itself. You don't get the true value till you take the talent and merge it with skill, merge it with experience, merge it with wisdom, merge it with a right support system, merge it with a fixed and focused idea of what you're going to do with it. Not just say, I'm going to be good. How are you going to be good? I said, okay, I'm not just going to be a public speaker. I'm not just going to be a motivational or inspirational speaker. I'm going to be someone who empowers people to change their lives. I'm going to be someone who can work with them on a psychological level, a social level, a financial level, uh, an emotional level, uh, help them with the remapping of their neurological process, a spiritual level, help them understand the importance of the energy they emit spiritually and how that uh, energy resonates and attracts with like energy and how they have to control their emotional state in order to manage their uh, energy, how they need to control their thoughts in order to manage their energy. What they really are saying when they say, I feel a certain way, you're really just describing your current state uh, a frequency you're in. I don't feel that good. Oh, man, I feel awesome. Today, I'm just excited. I'm happy. You're talking about frequencies. The problem with most people, though, is that they can't find that high frequency and stay there. They're, they, they're up and down. One, They got these moments where they're happy, but they got these moments where they're down. Everybody's going to get a moment where they get knocked off their frequency. I have uh, adopted a 60 to 90 second rule. Now, I don't always get it, but that's the that's the thing. A 60 to 90 second rule that when something happens that knocks me off of the state where I operate at most of the time, how you see me is how I am. Um, drives my wife crazy sometimes because I'm always doing something and we, 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 we're kind of funny because we we get a kick out of agitating each other in a playful way. But we but we always stay in this this place and and and, and, and people think, you know, he's front and he's faking. No, I've just trained myself how to use gratitude as my anchor. Yeah. See, when I wake up in the morning, I start a process called priming before I do anything else. I start a process called priming. Well, brush my teeth. Then I start a process called priming. Oh, while, while I mentioned brushing my teeth, uh, brush with your offhand. Uh, the reason being is that when you brush with your left hand, if you're right-handed, you brush with your left hand you're actually stimulating the right side of the brain, which is the creative side, and you want that going as much as possible. It's, it's at its strongest anyway, early in the morning before you start to engage all these things that make you start to use rational thought, logical thought, critical thought that starts to recruit the left side of the brain. The more the uh, you have to speak, uh, form speech and all that stuff, like all that's done on the left side, the more the creative side starts to step out of the way and let the left side do it. So. I actually brush with the offhand because it actually does. Using using the offhand has been shown to stimulate creativity uh, by uh, stimulating the right side of the brain. Anyway, with that being said, uh, back to this whole thing. I get up and I prime myself. Now, priming is three steps for me. The first step of priming is setting a state of gratitude. I, I tell myself to come up with at least three ways that I'm grateful. Uh, sometimes... Uh, well, one thing is always that I'm, I'm grateful for my marriage. I'm grateful uh, the fact that I had two great grandparents that gave up their golden years to raise me because they laid the foundation of the belief I have in myself now. I'm grateful for having unbelievably gorgeous and wonderful kids. Uh, we ain't always on the same page when it comes to my older kids, but I love them and I know they love me. Um, but when it comes down to it, they know they can pick up that phone and the old man's going to be there. Uh, and that's all that matters to me. Be, go out and live your life. I'm not controlling you. But that, so I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the ability to touch people's lives. I'm grateful that I have a chance to do something in this world that will allow me to leave a legacy. I can just go on and on and on of the things I wake up every day and I'm grateful for. 
Why is it important? Because when you have a foundation that's built on gratitude, you can't be bitter when you're grateful. You can't stay angry when you're grateful. You don't become fearful when you're grateful. Anxiety doesn't visit you when you're grateful. I'm telling you that when you build it on gratitude, when it's first and foremost, what am I grateful about? It's hard as hell to complain. When you know all the reasons you have to be grateful, the things that are going wrong are just some things that got to be dealt with and changed. So I start out with what's grateful. The second phase is I send in my version of prayers for all the people that I love and care for by name. And it doesn't take a whole lot of time. Uh, I've become extremely efficient at it, but I call my wife by name, my children uh, by name, and that's a lot now because with me and us, we've got a family, a merged blended family now, 13. Fortunately, most of them are grown, but we still have a few more to get out of here. But I call them by name. And I know what they need because I stay in touch close enough to know what they need. And I send that to them. I don't ask for it for them. I send it to them. I use my energy and my influence on the universe to move it towards them. And then I contact them and I tell them how to receive it. And then the last part is I understand how the world operates and the universe operates. And I receive all of the energy I need, all of the power, all of the consciousness, all of that, that the grand designer of this universe has created and allowed me the capacity to suck into me through the energy that I resonate. And when I'm functioning on the level of gratitude, the frequency I'm on is at the top. So everything that I'm pulling into me at this moment is nothing but positive energy, nothing but power nothing but the uh, ability to expect nothing but great things so that even when something bad comes, I don't see it. I mean, one, I don't see it as a problem. One of the most awesome things I've ever heard was Quincy Jones being questioned. And this was like, I think last year, being questioned about how over his career he overcome all those problems, with racism, starting young and so many different other things working against him coming up in the 50s and 60s and trying to make things happen. And Quincy's response was, I don't have problems. And the host was like, hey, look, everybody has problems. Quincy was like, no, I don't have problems. I have puzzles. See, the moment that you change your thinking and how you view things changes how you engage them. The fact that he says, I don't have problems, I have puzzles. Puzzles are meant to be solved. That means that anything that comes along has a solution. If it has a solution, it's not a problem. Because in coming up with the solution, you create things. And coming up with the solution, you learn things. And coming up in the, with the solution, you advance your self-image, your self-concept, your expectations. And coming up with the solution, you build confidence in yourself. There's a reason why you consistently face challenges in life. It's not to stop you. It's to prepare you. So when I get up in the morning and I prime and I end it with this session where I'm pulling in the power and the energy of God, the universe, however you want to call it, the consciousness of where, whatever you want to call it. But you better know that if you've got a relationship and a faith base and you're not exhibiting power, you're giving a black eye to the faith. If you're walking around and your life is always defeated, but you're claiming a relationship with an infinite power, you're not a very good representative. When you're walking around and everything is somebody's doing something to you and you don't have control over your life, but you're claiming a relationship with an infinite power, you're not being a good representative. I'm not saying that something won't come along and knock you off your base, but you've got to have a confidence in who you are, who designed you, what your purpose is, what direction you're headed in, and be so fixed on it that you get up. If you're not willing to die to get there, then you're doing the wrong thing. Hmm. If you're not willing to die, you're doing the wrong thing. I was watching an interview, and you know whether you like the cat or not, you have to understand that that the dude has put the work in. I was watching it, and and Will Smith was just talking about some of the things he's done, and it was two things that really caught me and really stuck with me. The first thing was a statement he made. He says people will tell you to be realistic, and then he says. Being realistic is the fastest road to mediocrity. 
And he starts to name some of the things that weren't realistic at the time they were done. It wasn't realistic for Roger Batterson to run a mile in under four minutes. It wasn't realistic for the Wright brothers uh, to create an airplane and fly. It wasn't realistic for Edison. It wasn't realistic for uh, Whitney. It, I mean, and you can go on down the line of all these things we have in our cell phone. Cars. Cars that freaking park themselves, stop by themselves, stop you from leaving the lanes. We can go on down the line. All of these things were once unrealistic. But luckily, the people that created them didn't think so. The other thing that he said that, 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 that I can definitely relate to said that he may not be the smartest person in the room. He might not be uh, the most resourced source for the most talented. He says, but you're not going to outwork him. He says, this is it's, it's real simple. He says, I'm willing to die on the treadmill. He said, if you put me on a treadmill with somebody more talented than me, one or two things are going to happen. They're going to either get off before I do or I'm going to die on the treadmill. If you're not willing to go the distance to have the things you're talking about, you're just talking. It's still fantasy. It's still wishful thinking. Until you schedule it and commit to going all out on it, it's just a fantasy. It's something that you talk about. It sounds good. You might even get some other people excited about it. But until you commit to it, until you sit up and tell yourself, you know what? I want you to get it. I'm going to die trying. And see, with me, there's no such thing as failure. If I'm still breathing, I'm still in the game. So I might not hit it when I want to. It might take me a couple of years beyond what I said it would take me. I'm not stopping though. See, there's no point I can get to and say, well, maybe it just wasn't. No, if I said I was going to do it, I'm going to do it. I just haven't done it yet. And that's the mindset I have. And I continuously grind, I continuously push, I continue. It's just this thing I have inside of me that, that if I had to give up everything in life and keep one thing, you know, that was a part of me. Not, you know, my, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about giving up my wife or nothing, but I'm talking about if it's one thing that I, I could keep, it was my resilience. It's, it's, it's the willingness to keep going until it happens, to not give up, to get your butt kicked over and over again and get up and expect to win the next time you go in. That's the mindset that determines who's going to make it. I can look at people over and over again in sports, in business. They didn't make it the first time they stepped up and they didn't hit a home run every time they swung. Matter of fact, you look at baseball. Baseball is a thing. If you are 30% are, are, are efficient, what they call batting 300, you, three out of 10 times you're successful at getting on base. You're going to be one of the greatest ever if you do that consistently over your career. 30%. So that means they fail 70% of the time. But they decided to do something that was so difficult that succeeding at 20% was considered average. So exceeding at 30% is considered great. But they established themselves because they went after something that wasn't easy. And that's it. Well, I'm going to have to get off of here. I just wanted to uh, share that with you. I didn't expect to stay on this long. Well, you guys have an unbelievable day, as I always say. I'm going to dial in and I encourage you to do the same thing. You guys have an awesome day. I'm out of here. Peace.